Good evening. Welcome to the May Lake Mills Area School Board meeting. Uh, our mission statement is preparing all of today's students for tomorrow's opportunities. Verification of meeting notice. Um, this, the agenda was submitted to the Lake Mills Leader and posted at the Lake Mills Library, the Lake Mills Post Office, and the Bank of Lake Mills on May 3rd. It was also posted on the district website. All right. Can we stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Could we have roll call, please? Rhonda Lee. Here. Rachel Davies. Here. Robert Dimperio. Here. David Radel. Here. Richard Mason. Here. Uh, do we have any agenda revisions? We do no. not. Okay, approval, please. I move to approve the agenda as printed. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Uh, any community input? No one has checked in with me, sir. Nope. Okay. No community input. Mr. Dimperio, Facilities Committee. Yes, um, and I would like to start the facilities report. Um, to express my gratitude for being able to attend the National School Board's convention in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And so I, I missed last month's meeting, but uh, believe me, I was working very hard um, at the convention. And I just wanted to share a couple of things that, um, that I came away with. It was really quite remarkable to be with several thousand advocates for public education. Um, the, the sessions were, were very energizing. Um, one of the things that, uh, th that I learned is that not only do school boards approve things that are brought to them, but we are also encouraged to take some initiatives. So I would, I would just let our administration know that I may take that to heart and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, a couple of the things that I was able to, was able to, to do was uh, a attending some um, breakout sessions in one, a, a school district in suburban Minneapolis um, has been working on uh, individualized learning. And for those of you whose, whose business this is, you probably already know these things, but I think that it was most interesting to see the kinds of responses uh, that, that this district got from both the students and the community. Um, and they kept representing, re referencing a district in Wisconsin that they learned a lot from, and that was a neighboring district in Kettle Moraine. And I think that we have had some collaborative effort with that district as well. So that was, that was pretty exciting. Um, the, the other thing that, that I got from that individualized learning was the importance of facilities and how facilities can aid in the collaboration um, of these of these students and and I think we have some very good examples in our elementary school and in our middle school and as we look forward to making some changes in our high school I think that those those are very important and then that led to a second breakout session where we looked at furniture that was conducive to to those kinds of things and I know that we have that at the elementary school and and, and especially I like the little the, the little stools that that roll and stuff but um, I was more interested to see what they did on the secondary level, and there certainly are plenty of applications that we can be looking at um, as, we, as we look to make improvements in this building. One of the other things that, 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 I, that I learned about was um, year-round schooling. And, and this is something that a district uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas, talked about. And this was, they spent about three years dealing with their community in, in trying to get a sense as to how people were going to react because as you know we've been we've been doing school for like this forever um, and and they found they found that it is working very well for them um, and they find that their performance is increasing and one of the things that they they point out is that there is what is called by some people a summer slide as, as students um, kind of forget things over the summer 
and, and, and there are some groups of students that are more affected than others by this. So that was all very interesting. Um, there was a general session that Terry Bradshaw was the keynote speaker. And if you've ever seen Terry Bradshaw on the football, you know he's a little, he's a little nuts. But for 45 minutes of Terry Bradshaw, that was worth the price of admission. It was just great. The, the, the guy, he is, he is very funny, but, but he was preaching um, some very basic, simple things that we often forget in today's society, and that is about um, caring and love for others around us. And, and, and to see a professional football player make these kinds of statements was, was pretty interesting. Um, so enough, uh, enough of that. The, the one thing that, that I um, wanted to share was that this next fall, our kindergarten students will be the class of 2031. We will be preparing them for jobs that don't exist right now. And so I think that that is a challenge for, for all of us in this room um, as, as we look forward is, is to, to be able to take care of these children, um, that class of 2031. Um, so the next thing that we did, um, our facilities committee got together and talked about the projects that we may do uh, from this year's budget, the maintenance projects. And we met with uh, Ms. Strike, uh, Ms. Brockert, uh, our facilities uh, director and our maintenance director. And we've got uh, $150,000 in the budget. Uh, we've got projects that obviously total more than that. And so the work now is to prioritize uh, and we'll be coming back to the board with uh, those recommendations at a later date. And now, I know you guys have been waiting and I didn't, didn't mean to hold you up, but we have two guests tonight, uh, Kate Winkler from the Myron Construction and Teresa Wodzinski from EUA Architects. Um, and, and as you may know, we've, we've had uh, three community forums uh, talking about our, both our long range plans, uh, long range planning for the district as well as um, immediate plans for this building. Uh, and, and we are now going to get an update on uh, the results and where we go from here. So. Wait, you're gonna, you're gonna need to grab the microphone. <coughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Otherwise, you can just unhook it. All right. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Kate from Myron. Can you hear me? Okay. Sounds like a little feedback. Is it okay? That's, okay. that's how it sounds. All right. All right. So as Bob said, uh, well, the last time we were here talking about the community forums, I think, was in February. And we were coming up with the idea of how do we get the community engaged in our facilities planning? How do we get the facility, or get folks um, interested and, and involved in what we're doing? And we came up with um, the plan to do three, a series of three community forums. So tonight, what I'm going to talk about briefly in this PowerPoint, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly in respect of everyone's time. But you do have a paper copy in front of you. Um, is the feedback and kind of a summary of what we learned from talking to the 50 people who cared enough to come in and, and uh, listen to what we had to say and to learn about what's happening with facilities. There's two other things that are at your places. In addition to the copy of this PowerPoint, there is um, a document that has kind of a cover page on it, which is all of the individual comments, every, every individual comment that we recorded, and a summary of all the data that was collected from all three community forums. So if you're looking for some light reading later on tonight, just you know, spend some time with that document. It's actually great to hear what everyone um, <coughs> was, was you know, interested and involved in, and we really tried to capture everything in those documents. So you'll see a combination of text comments and also some ways that we quantified um, the, the comments that came in and prioritizations. Um, the third thing that is at your place is a proof copy of the community survey. So we're getting to the point where we're ready to hand it off to the printer tomorrow. It's being proofed up at Myron um, as we speak. So it's being proofed for typos and so forth. If, so if you see anything that looks odd, um, it's, you know, it will be addressed. Um, and so the, we're going to go through the schedule and next steps with the 
community survey as well. Okay. So um, again, just to recap, as, as Bob mentioned, we had three community forums. We had um, March 20th, April 3rd, and May 2nd. And we, we did try Facebook Live um, in the April and May sessions, which I think turned out pretty well. We had 471 views of our, uh, as this is as of Friday, of the April video, and 377 views as of, as of May. Um, so that's a great way to bring more people into the conversation, and I think I would recommend that we do that again um, and maybe have a little more promotion around it, but it was a good way to, to reach out to more folks. And so the way that people were invited to the community forum, we sent a letter from um, the board to specific folks who we wanted to have there. We also did a district-wide call with a postcard um, and invited people through social media, email, and through the website. And I believe the media was there at our May 2nd meeting as well. Okay. And as far as the community participation, um, we had, I'm sorry, the purpose. Just to recap again, um, we edu we're educating folks about the facility's master planning process. So this is a long process that's been going on for a number of years, and we kind of want to hold people's attention and make sure that they are following along with us. And, and this was a great way to engage folks who are interested and engaged. Along with that goes with building trust. You know, the whole, this is um, a transparent process, and we want to make sure that we're speaking to everyone in the community and letting them know that, you know, this is, we're all in this together. This is, these are the community schools, and we want to hear from you. It's an opportunity to provide background information and put things into context, a way for us to collect feedback, talk about next steps, and then we also use it to inform changes to the community survey. <coughs> So in all, we had 50 recorded responses. So everyone who came to the sessions received a paper um, feedback form to fill out. And so that's what's in the packet as a summary of all those feedback forms. We recorded what we could. Um, the March 20th and April 3rd folks responded to the same set of questions. So everyone had the same set of questions. We also asked them to rank um, their support on a scale of 1 to 10 of the projects and also their sense of urgency of the projects, anywhere from zero to five, five to 10 years, 10 to 20, or no support at all. So those are some of the rankings. So we asked both open-ended questions and to get some qualitative data and um, some, uh, the urgency level and support were, were qualitative data. And I just want to preface this by saying that this is not statistically, um, you know, this is not a pure uh, survey methodology, but it is a great way to um, listen to pe people who came and shared their opinions with us. Can I interrupt for a second, Kate? Yep. Mm -hmm. We had more people attend than obviously that filled those out, because as we counted yes. people there. Yeah, we did, I would say they're probably in the 60 plus range of total attendance, 60 to 70, but as far as um, collecting all of the documents, it's, it's about 50, so, yep. Um, comment theme, so high level, you'll see hundreds of comments in that packet, um, but at a high level, people appreciated the phasing strategy. It seemed logical to them, and as they were responding, they would often say, you know, express the, how important this is to the community, um, the long-term financial benefits of doing a phased approach to tackling the master, pro master planning process. Um, there was a question about why is the new elementary school nearing capacity, which is a question that can be answered by referring to the Roffer study and some of the demographic research that's been done. Um, a common theme was what's the city's involvement in this planning process when we think about recreation facilities and um, especially outdoor athletics. Um, we talked about adding the gym and accelerating the purpose, uh, accelerating the gym um, early on in the process, and that seemed to make sense. But folks were also really interested in making sure that the academic spaces were taken care of, um, and there was a good, a large amount of interest in expanding um, or giving more support to tech ed and agricultural classroom spaces. There was a couple of folks who asked about a pool. Um, in general, the sentiment is that the high school sport should be played at the high school. So when we talk about consideration of moving the football field from the middle school to the high school, that seemed was generally supported. Um, and also generally supported for moving baseball to Wallace Park. There's a high level overview of the themes. All right, now we can geek out on some data. So um, this, this graph 
shows the support levels. So how would you rank these improvement opportunities on a scale of 1 to 10? So 1 being, I'm not really supportive, and 10 being, yeah, let's go for it. Um, and this is the, the combined March and April groups. So we had um, 21 responses in March and 12 in, in April that were recorded. And you can see there's some variation between the groups. In the first section of gym area improvements, the first group was pretty high support, 7, um, and a little bit lower in April, 3. Corrective work only at the campus field. Um, that really doesn't have much support, as you can see. Relocating the baseball and reconstruction, reconstructing the football field at the middle school site, that got about a three, per, a three um, support level. And there was a much higher support for relocating those fields to the high school and then converting the middle school space to a green space. So that's the general support um, on those groups. Switching over to the May group, now the questions changed slightly. And the reason we changed the questions was because we were seeing that low support of, on the middle school site. And um, also there were some financial considerations to that. And then we also added the question about what about exploring a community pool. So the May group got a slightly different set of questions and you'll see that in your packet as well. So very high support for continuing with the academic expansion at the high school. Um, also pretty good support for relocating almost seven relocating the football field to the high school. Um, good support about for, you know, 50-50 for accelerating the gym addition from this group. Uh, about, three per th about three, level three support for corrective work at the middle school. And the pool is coming in at 2.76 support. And you just want, you want to clarify what the question actually was about the pool? So people don't think we're going to build a pool, but... The question was, would you support exploring um, construction and operation of a community pool? Right. I think that was the exact question. I think a big part of that conversation is also who, own, who owns and runs the district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be clear. Deeper conversations. Yep. Next slide. Okay. Thank you. Um, and again, this is just a summary, the highlights of the support levels. So you can go to the next one. Yep. Okay, this is a little bit of an overwhelming slide, so I apologize for this, but uh, I wanted to get it all in one place. So this is the urgency level. So urgency level when we talk about timing, what's the timing of these things? And when we say zero to five, um, if you consider going to referendum in November, the consideration uh, construction would not begin for about at least two years after a successful referendum. So that's that's kind of the general time frame. So zero to five is like now for construction, um, and then five to ten, ten to twenty years, and then D. The option D was no support or no urgency. Um, and there's a little bit of a the trend here. Why don't you jump to the next slide and we'll we'll do the summary. Oh, actually, jump back. I'm sorry. Um, Okay, so March, the March 20th group, um, yes, they said, yes, let's go ahead and do the gym area improvements. They were at 71% wanted to do that in zero to five years. Um, not a lot of support from that group for the campus field improvements only. Uh, relocating and con baseball and reconstruction of the football field did not get a lot of support from that group and relocating the baseball and football fields and then converting the middle school site did get 76% um, of the folks said do that now or in the next five years. Similar pattern with April, the April group, um, gym area improvements, about 36% of folks wanted to do that in five to 10 years. Um, not much support for campus field restoration, better support for relocating baseball and football and 100% of the people wanted to move baseball and football and convert middle school to green space. And so just looking at the average, those red lines just kind of show you where the trends are. And the next group, um, the May group, what is the urgency level for these folks? 100% um, they were in support of the academic expansion. 
Again, kind of split on the gym acceleration. We saw that in the support levels too. Support level came in at 4.76 or just under five level support. And the same thing here with um, their urgency level. Corrective work only at the campus field. That half of them thought that was a good idea to do now and the rest were not as supportive. Relocating the football field to the high school, 46% of folks said do that in, in uh, now to five years. And the swimming pool seemed like the greatest amount of support was 10 to 20 years down the road. Perhaps it's something that could be explored um, in the future once some other priorities are, are taken in, under consideration. And, and this slide is just a quick highlight um, of what, it, what we just talked about. So we can keep going. Okay. So what do we do with all this wonderful data? We have, we have numbers and we have comments um, from the folks who came. So this helps us uh, make some adjustments to the survey. So one of the biggest changes was increasing the amount, um, the original amount of, of critical academic expansion needs at the high school was 6.5 million. And that's what the amount we were gonna test on the survey. Listening to the, the feedback, there was um, a change made to add tech ed and agricultural classroom renovations into the essential projects. And that, ca that is estimated at about $400,000. And so that brings that total critical dollar amount up to 6.9 million. Did you want to expand on that at all, Teresa, on the, those classrooms? Sure. So as, as she said, the mic. Uh, she she mic. Mic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's recorded then for cable. Sure. So as Kate explained, there's definitely, um, we were responding constantly into, as to the feedback we were getting in the forums, either making changes to the questions we were ba being asked or making changes to the survey. And this tech ed, ag, project lead the way, hands-on learning, all of those, um, the, the technical arts are, are really sort of uh, the STEAM STEM are um, something that people are very aware of right now, especially when you think of the labor shortages that, that people are seeing in the workforce. So this was definitely a response to the feedback of people showing up and saying, hey, we really need to look at this. I know there's um, staff in the high school right now that are really, really energizing that, that, part of the, that part of the school and getting kids excited about those types of programs. And so at this point, um, and this will be tested as a critical need in the survey, we're looking at adding dollars um, for those, those renovations, whether it be additional equipment or whether it be reconfiguration of rooms that is yet to be determined. Um, the other um, scope change that was, was um, added is the concession stand renovations. If we're looking at um, expansion of the outdoor athletic facilities, there's some requirements due to code to add um, restrooms and toilet facilities in that area, so that's another addition. And then we also decided to, um, based on feedback from the board and based on feedback from the people who came to the community forums, to explore. We're putting a question on the survey to explore potential pool construction and operations. Um, there's no dollar amount attached with that yet. There's considerable work that would have to be you know, researched in order to get, and we're, we're a bit under a time crunch to get the survey out to folks. Um, but that is going to be on there as would you support the district exploring this as an option. So we will be able to get some feedback on the pool question. All right, so what's next? So today is uh, the 14th, so tomorrow it's scheduled, the survey is scheduled to go to the printer. Um, and again, the survey is being administered by School Perceptions, and um, their team will hand it off once we're done with the final proofing and spell checks and all that tomorrow. They'll get it to the printer. The next, and it takes about two weeks from the time that it's handed off to the printer to get into production and mailing. Um, the, and we do have a holiday in there too, I think there's Memorial Day weekend. So um, the next step would be the week of May 23rd, the survey link will be mailed out to staff. So all staff will be able to take the survey. Um, so we anticipate it hitting mailboxes the week of May 28th. 
So people will start to get it in their mailbox. And again, folks have the option to take it online or they can fill out the paper survey and mail it back. There's an envelope that's tucked right into the survey. So whichever is, is most convenient for them. Um, at the same time during that week, parents will get a link to, to take the survey as well. So just another way for them to, to you know, if they don't want to fill out the paper, they can take it on, online. And then the survey will remain open. Generally, Bill likes to leave surveys open for two weeks and three weekends. And so we, if we look that out that distance, um, to around June 18th is when the survey would close. It takes them a couple of weeks to compile all the data and look at, look at the results. And then um, he'll come back to the school board and make a report based on all the results come in. And then um, generally with response rate, and Bill can answer this question for sure, but I think we try to aim for getting a, a baseline of 400 responses. Generally, the response rate comes in anywhere between 17, 18, 19, 20 percent, typically in communities. Um, we are also going to be helping to get the word out about the survey. And a couple ways that we're going to do that is with a flyer. Um, we've put together um, a communications plan that Megan and Pam and, and we're going to work on together. Uh, so we have a flyer, we have posters, we have some social media posts that we're going to put out, some emails just to remind people that the survey is coming and it's really important that they take a few minutes to fill it out. So there is a plan to continue to communicate about the survey and ask people to um, make sure that they are getting involved. So. All of those activities will be going on in the next couple of weeks. So that was a lot of information. Um, what questions can I answer? Or Teresa and I can answer. Questions from anybody? No? No? Okay. Uh, what? Yeah. Go ahead. If we have remaining comments on this, who do we talk to? You can give it to okay. Or give it to Pam and... I, I'd okay. rather talk through it. Okay. Um, okay, because it's going to press tomorrow. No, I get it. Okay, so. All right. I, I did have one thing about the survey, though, mm -hmm. that um, that I wanted to bring up, if that's possible. Yeah, sure. go ahead. That's a, that's a bigger sticking point to me. I think we're missing the opportunity. I'm not at a microphone. There you go. I think we're missing the opportunity to gather information on the survey about who is filling this out. We ask about people who have children attending the Lake Mills Area School District, but we don't ask about people who are vested because they had children attending the, you know, the, the, the district uh, and whether they you know, left or graduated um, or people who are graduates themselves. So I know we always talk about, well, you know, the people who, you know, grew up here, you know, have nostalgia for and blah, blah. But I think that we don't know that. Um, and so if there's any room at all to add a question about that or, or two questions, and it seems like there is, there, there are these lines for, for suggestions down at the bottom, but this really isn't a page that has a lot of need for suggestions because it's just check the box mostly. So. I think that would that would give us a little more insight into like who it is who is answering a specific way. So you think the group that's missing are the people who had students? Yeah. That so attended. one of my suggestions was yeah, um, and this can be refined. Obviously, I mean, I told you when I wrote this, it was yeah. like a long day. But um, do you have any adult children who attended and/or graduated from the Lake Mills Area School District? And then maybe one about if they themselves graduated. And oh. people people could fit into multiple categories, but that would give us a lot of insight into mm -hmm. where their heart is, you know, mm -hmm. on this. So you feel it's more important that we're asking the question, not necessarily to keep those separate. So you would be okay if the question, children attending or have already graduated, you don't need to keep those separate. I, I don't separate. think so. I mean, uh, well, that, this one is, do you have any adult children who attended and or graduated from the Lake Mills Area School District? So just knowing if they had students in the district at any time, because they may have, the you know, the students may not mm -hmm. have graduated, but they may have gone over to um, the St. Paul District, you know, to the So an additional church. question, not just a modification of the Correct. existing question. Correct. Correct. Yep. It's an additional question. And then maybe one about, did you yourself graduate from attend or graduate or something those are, within. Those are in those original notes. The, the second one I brought up just now about if the person themselves did wasn't in my notes, but. 
Okay, anything else? Thank you, too. Appreciate it. Looks good. Ready to go. I good. think this is dra draft number 15. <laughs> Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to set a date when Bill Foster from School Perceptions and probably this team as well comes back. And the dates available that, that Bill has for a work session would be June 26th or 28th. Happen to have your calendars with you. What time are you thinking? You're looking in the evening or during yeah. the day or what? Evening. The evening. And earlier is okay, right? Like, like a six o'clock. Like evening. six. Either one is okay with me. What about? Either is okay with me. Yeah, that's fine. Either is either, either is what? just as good or bad. Twenty six or twenty eighth of June. Either of those. Two June twenty sixth, twenty eighth. Probably the twenty sixth. A Tuesday or Thursday. Oh, they're both Tuesday or Thursday. Whatever. It is what it is. Figure it out. Are those okay? I don't know. I have a, my daughter's in theater, so I'll figure it out. I'm, both those days are rehearsals. Okay, so like 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock, the 26th? Sure. So is that the one you should? Yeah, okay. we, we can do that. Yeah. Which, which did we pick? 26th. 26th. Tuesday. June 26th? Yeah. Six o'clock here. Yes. All right. Can we go on? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mrs. Brown, I see you out there. <laughs> Ready to go. Basically go. You're up. Good <laughs> evening. Uh, for my report today, I invited Gerilyn Rohr, our transition teacher. Um, she has worked very hard this year to. Um, work on our 18 to 21 year old program and I thought it would be great for her to give a recap of the program from our first year. <laughs> okay, um, I know my time is limited so what I chose to do today is we had put together this slideshow for our community conversation in April um, and this is just a snippet of our students um, you're gonna see we work at st. Vincent de Paul's every Monday doing a variety of different things we don't do any one thing the same um, sometimes they work together sometimes they work individually but we're there every Monday from 9 to 11 um, we're in the store we're we're back organizing we're pricing um, we do all kinds of different things um, You know, obviously, like this is the major part of our program is is building their vocational skills, building their confidence, learning how to use different machines. This is Zachary's Acres. I don't know if anybody has heard about that, but this is a place we go to twice a month in Economwalk. It's a wonderful, wonderful place made for people with disabilities. They have um, a handicapped accessible pier. They have a <coughs> brand new handicapped accessible treehouse. We go out there and we help them get ready for events. Right now, we're very busy helping them garden. We're planting. I learned how to plant asparagus. I've never done that before. Um, they're hauling dirt. They're planting. They're harvesting. They're learning all about the agriculture. Um, and hopefully next year, we're working with Zacharias Acres to, to write a grant. And if we get it, we're going to actually next year have our own garden plot out there. So we're really hoping that that, that goes through. Um, but we do that twice a month, and um, then you will see, this is still Zachariah's Acres. Um, again, we go there, they have a greenhouse, so we're there all year long. It's not just when the weather's nice. Their greenhouse is actually probably about as big as this space, and this is actually in the greenhouse. So we, we've harvested lettuce, um, all kinds of stuff, carrots, things like that. So. Um, this is outside by their new tree house. 
And we also get, and Emily actually got to work at a farmer's market with Zacharias Acres. And when we go out there, we actually are working with another transition group from Hartford. So that's another nice piece, is that we're getting, you know, they're getting exposed to other students. This is the food pantry. We're there every Friday. Every Friday morning, we are responsible for stocking the store for the following Tuesday. And this is really good too because the students are building organizational skills. Everything has to look nice. They're having to count how many cans of corn you need and then go find the corn and bring it back. Um, so they're learning how to work together and doing different things there. And then of course we're moving into some of their jobs. Emily works at the market. I'm sure some, many people know that. Sebastian works at Culver's. Um, and this is, these are their jobs that they have on their own, not necessarily through the program. They, most of the students work, um, work their jobs outside of, of the program. Um, but what I wanted to do too is, I know I'm, my time is limited, but aside from just these job experiences that we do, and we're very busy doing that, we are also doing a lot um, of life skills and social skills. Every, every week they cook their own lunches every single day, unless of course we go out to eat, but they plan their meals. We, uh, they make grocery lists. We go to the market every week. They shop for their food. They use their own money. Um, then they have to come back and actually um, uh, put it in a ledger so they see how much they have. They each bring $20 a week and they have to see how much they spend and what they have left. Um, so that's a big part. And then cooking. And we're not just making sandwiches, they're making spaghetti, they've made pork chops, they've made chicken <coughs> drumsticks. We've done all kinds of different things like that. Um, socially, we've been involved with the Club 55 group. Um, maybe once a month we get together with them. We've been there to play bingo. They've invited us to a, a brewer party. So it's kind of nice. I mean, it's, it's a walk across the parking lot, but it's also been nice to kind of integrate the two groups. Um, and our involvement with other transition groups, I mentioned that we have, um, when we go to Zacharias Acres, we're meeting up with a Hartford group twice a month. Um, we've also been um, in contact and, and done a couple of activities with, tomorrow we actually have a party, we're heading up to Watertown, and we're doing a big cookout <coughs> with the Watertown transition group, Watertown Beaver Dam, Fort Atkinson, um, and that's it for tomorrow. So we're really, they're meeting other people, um, um, having a good time doing that too. So, and then there's also um, our piece at RLAC. We're doing a lot of things around that building too. Um, we do a lot of cleaning. We wash a lot of their towels. Um, right now we're actually doing a gardening project outside. <coughs> we're kind of trying to spruce up the outside a little bit. So we've raked and weeded and planted and all kinds of stuff out there, still doing that. Um, and then another big piece is, is exercise. You know, we do, uh, when the weather's nice, we, we try to get out walking. We did it a lot more at the beginning of the year when we weren't as busy than we do it now, but, you know, we have access to their treadmills and things like that. Um, so, yeah, did I miss anything? I think that's kind of in a nutshell. It's been a phenomenal year. Like, we... I mean, I think all of us have had fun. I mean, they, they, the kids, you know, I, some of them want to be called kids, some of them want to be called adults. I call them all kids, but um, we have a great time together. And to watch them grow and see how far they've come even in the eight months that we've been together is very exciting. So we're looking forward to next year and, and the year after that. Good, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I you learned how to plant uh, asparagus. <laughs> yeah. So that's I've good. never seen an asparagus plant before. You so <laughs> very exciting. Thank you. Didn't grow up in a farm. Okay. I, I did not grow up in a farm. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. That was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Ms. Sirud. <coughs> here to give you a little update on summer school we have summer school is getting ready in full swing we have a lot of staff hired we are still taking a couple more para applications um, and <coughs> enrollment is officially over but we are definitely still accepting anybody who wants to enroll so if anybody is interested in attending summer school um, they can just contact uh, Julie Mashey here at the high school and we will get you into some classes some classes are full like bowling is very popular and there's only so many bowling lanes so we're <laughs> that one's full um, can't really do much about that we're not building a bowling alley um, 
Some assessment updates. We are in our final swing of assessment for the year to see our, our growth and we're really looking forward to see the results of that because we've been studying our data very closely this year. Um, we've been also analyzing which assessment is giving us the best data. So next year we have decided to um, not do Ames web testing, which was um, something that we did three times a year. It was more of a paper pencil test that teachers then had to score. Um, we're finding that while the data is nice, it's not necessary. We get so much more out of our iReady assessment, which is what we started this year. Um, the teacher reports for each kid on those are 16 pages long and really delve into each child's um, work. So that's the teachers really like that assessment data so much more than the Ames Web data. And so we're, we're going to make that transition. We are also moving Ames, uh, iReady data I ready assessment up to sixth grade next year to move with those fifth graders and then we'll continue map for seventh and eighth graders um, but then we'll phase that out over the years because what we're finding is I ready is just got more detail to it and is giving us more information and is so much more user friendly than map but yet we don't want to lose the data we've had with the kids that are in seventh and eighth grade over time so that's why we're keeping that for now with them. Um, and then on the curriculum side of things, the elementary math team and I have been meeting all year long and we've been investigating our um, elementary math curriculum, our K through fifth grade math curriculum, and we've made the decision to go with Ready Math, which is tied to iReady. And um, DeForest is using it this year, and we got to see them, and they are loving it. Those teachers, for the first year, for their first year implementing it, they were so excited and so happy to do it, and watching them do it was really exciting. Um, we had also investigated Bridges Math, which um, came highly recommended, but there, people that were implementing that for the first year had file cabinets worth of stuff, and um, the teachers were having to make a lot of materials, very labor intensive and not very different than what we're doing now, other than uh, Everyday Math is a spiral program. Uh, Bridges is very much like everyday math, but more of a unit based program. So that was what we determined was the difference. Ready Math integrates um, iReady. It's kind of the same company. So the assessment is integrated then with an online component that the students have been using this year, and we've been seeing some really good results. The iReady instruction that's online is differentiated. Each kid gets different lessons based on their assessment data. And then it has the traditional teacher teaching component to it, but also a lot of group work and workshop style um, components to the math curriculum. So that's really exciting. Uh, training will actually start for the teachers still this May. Um, iReady is going to come in and start there. They will come back in August, they will come back in September, and they will come back <coughs> next January to make sure that our teachers have the tools they need to implement the math curriculum. Well. Questions? Um, what grades did you say Ready Math would be? Kindergarten through fifth. Thanks. Anything else? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Thompson, did you do? Oh, there you are. A couple of updates from the elementary school. This past month, we had our kindergarten through second grade spring concert. Mr. Shana Felt packed the house once again with our parents coming to um, ooh and ah over our youngest musicians. Our garden cleanup is complete. We had our garden committee volunteers from our community come in to help clean up the garden along with our middle school helpers and our <coughs> kindergartners. So jointly, they um, have all the raised beds ready to be planted in the coming weeks by our second graders, third graders, and fourth graders. In addition to that, the Girls on the Run this year um, helped us as their community service project to paint rocks for one of our shaded areas out on the playground. A beautiful ring of rocks um, that they painted are underneath one of the trees out on the playground. So if you get a chance to take a look, it is really amazing, very beautiful. Mrs. Norgren, a kindergarten teacher at our school, was um, awarded for the Healthy School Challenge, a classroom kit of supplies for the mindful work that she's been doing this school year. And along with that, our school went into a drawing for a $500 grant, which we also received. <coughs> so Mrs. Norgren will be dreaming big on how to spend that $500 on mindful or healthy ways that she can impact the rest of our school community. And then finally, on June 7th, we're going to have our um, annual field day event, and we're still looking for volunteers. So if anybody um, is out there watching and it wants to volunteer, please call Mr. Annan at the elementary school. Any questions? I heard the kindergartners very much enjoyed the worms that they found while they were cleaning up the garden. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> thank you. Good. Thank you very much. 
Mrs. Bauer. Good evening. The middle school is enjoying these last couple of weeks of school as our kids all um, start to act the age of the next grade level up. So our sixth graders are acting like seventh graders, our seventh graders are acting like eighth graders, and our eighth graders are definitely asking, um, are you going to miss us? So um, it's a good time of year. I do want to do a shout out to all of our uh, music teachers and the wonderful concerts they put on. Um, strings was last week and the week before, band and choir. Um, we pack the house and we're considering um, um, our use of facilities with um, especially like the fifth and sixth grade concerts um, where it was standing room only. So, um, but it's wonderful that they're so well attended and um, the growth of the kids is wonderful to watch. Uh, we, as you heard from uh, Mrs. Thompson, uh, completed our community service day um, two weeks ago. Um, um, and uh, we, the kids uh, did all sorts of things. They went out to farms. They, um, one particular group with me, like scrubbed down the bleachers and cleaned the weight room. Um, so we had a great time with that. Um, upcoming, we have our D.A.R.E. graduation is uh, tomorrow night. Um, and of course, we'll have our eighth grade recognition ceremony, which is kind of cute. Their theme will be um, staying together. And then um, our last day, we are focusing more on our advisors and community groups, um, breaking up and doing individual activities instead of one large activity like we have in the past. Um, and then we will be picnicking again. Uh, Melissa and I will be cooking brats for the teachers um, at, is it North Rock Lake Park? Upper, Upper. Upper Rock Lake Park. <clears throat> so um, that's what we will be doing the last day of school. Any questions for me? Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bronker. Um, earlier this month, we um, recognized our food service workers. Um, Mrs. Coyman did a nice little appreciation thing to each of our food service staff, and we appreciate what they've all done for the, us this past year. Um, right now, my involvement is mainly just working on the budget for next year, and I'm planning to present some information to you in June. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mrs. Strike. Well, on the catch-all tonight, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Blaze is not here. Uh, he's with Mr. Vogel at the Capital Conference Honors Banquet, so that's always a exciting night for our kids. So I have Blaze's report to begin with. We're about to wrap up the school year here at Lake Mills High School. Spring sports are having exciting seasons. Softball is eight and two. Track has had strong showings at all of its meets, and baseball is still undefeated. On the academic side of things, AP students are in the process of taking their AP exams. The Jerry Awards, which is, formerly was called the Tommy Awards, uh, just came out and participants from last fall's musical along with Mrs. Heimstreet won Best Musical, which is astounding. I'll tell you more details about that. He's being very humble here. Um, for Teacher Appreciation Week, the Student Council held a teacher scavenger hunt where the winner took home a $100 Visa card. And overall, it's an exciting time with extracurriculars and academics at the high school. I encourage everyone to come to graduation on June 3rd. It's a great day to be an Elkett. Okay. And then for Mr. Vogel, I have some more um, high school comments. Uh, first of all, over 25 students participated in the 9th Annual Jefferson County Connections Youth Leadership Conference in Watertown. This was a one-day conference where students worked to focus on everyday leadership and how to influence others in a positive way. Lake Mills High School is a recipient of the 2017 Wisconsin Advanced Placement Advisory Council, Council Pace Setter Award. The 2017 Pace Setter Award is the result of our school's participation and performance in the 2017 AP testing. Um, the high school hosted another successful prom on the tw uh, April 21st, and it was held at the elementary school. Thanks to Mrs. Body and the junior um, advisors for organizing this event. Thank you to Amanda Thompson for agreeing to be such a gracious host for our high school students. Another thank you goes to all those who help with post-prom. That's a rotary event. Um, congratulations to the forensics team for their impressive performance at last month's state speech festival at UW-Madison, which earned the high school for the first time the recognition among the top 5% 
of the state's top five percent metal earning schools at the festival. This is an elite group of, there's only 17 schools in the state of Wisconsin that get us this award. And by looking at the list, which we've attached here, you can see that's all sizes of schools. So we have been striving for this award for a long time, so that's a great accomplishment. Someone across the street seems to get that often. <laughs> um, the Spring Art Show um, has begun, and it's at the um, LD Fargo Library, so you're all invited to stop down there and see the, the, the kids' artwork. And the reception is Thursday. Is next Thursday? Oh, okay. There's a reception where we give out the awards and um, have cake. And then, um, I'm going to save this one. So upcoming events, academic awards and scholarship night have been combined, and that's Sunday night, May 20th at 6.30 in the auditorium, and that is sponsored by the Rotary. It's a nice event. Um, they restructured, so on May 25th, some of the student recognition um, will, that had been done on a separate night will be done during the school day now at a, an assembly here at the high school at 9.30 on the 25th. May 31st is the farewell to seniors picnic. June 3rd again is graduation and then June 5th through the 7th um, will be exam weeks for the rest of the kids. Okay, now where am I at? Okay. In your packet you'll see, we'll consider this the first reading of the high school handbook. This will be the first reading. The second reading will be next month. Theirs needs to go to the printer in June, so that's why we are um, bringing that to you. Um, the changes are noted in your packet. Um, you had asked to just have the changes highlighted. So you'll see on page one, the school year has been changed. Um, the organization of the administrators list has been changed. Um, there's an updated text message uh, about information. There's new information about um, following Mr. Vogel on Twitter and then we deleted to, uh, some technical things. Then on page six, you'll just see the updated calendar. Otherwise, the school handbook will stay as it is. Um, there are no references to policy. Remember, all of our policy numbers changed, so we made sure that that was not referenced. And um, that is just, it will be noted that um, all policies apply to all students, and those can be um, accessed on our website. Okay, recreation. Um, report. I'd like to say uh, one of the most important things right now is that every <coughs> every household in the school district received a postcard like this asking uh, for participation in a survey about the recreation department. This comes out of uh, the meetings that we had um, about concerns about the recreation department and we want to respond by that by collecting more information. Remember that we're working with a consultant from UW Whitewater to help us with that evaluation and she has um, actually linked us up with the Whitewater Surveying Company or Surveying Service. So um, we have UW Whitewater students who will be tabulating the results there. Um, I think it uh, goes without saying that everything's a li little bit delayed with our weather this spring, but we're in full spring of um, sw full swing in, in spring events. One thing that I wanted to highlight is that we do have an archery program and we had 12 students uh, that were participating in two different programs there. Signing up students for baseball and softball and t-ball and all the numbers are listed in your report. Uh, there are also um, the numbers listed there for the youth en enrichment as well as the adult enrichment programs. Ironically, as Ben says, uh, we actually had one more snowshoe rental period during this last month. Uh, that was kind of unexpected. Um, and despite needing to be rescheduled, um, we did have that adult trip finally to um, the Amish program, or the Amish area in um, Dalton. What a really exciting program that's happening is our summer playground program that's going to allow for childcare uh, for students and that was created, remember, to enhance our summer school program. And at this time we have 48 students signed up, signed up for that. And I know the recreation department is hiring um, staff to um, fill those roles. I think that this next item is really important. It's also in response to the conversations we've had with um, parents about the frustration of registering their students or even adults registering for rec um, programming. So we have um, 
gotten rid of Blue Sombrero, or we're transitioning out of Blue Sombrero, and we're now using a program called Our School. That's a program that we also use um, to run all of our athletic events at the high school. So that's a software we're very familiar with, and we're, we think that people will be much more comfortable using that to register. Um, and then there's also a list of all the umpires that are being held for or hired for summer baseball there. Okay. All right, so now to some of my information. Um, <laughs> the music department is on fire right now. Um, you know, not only is it spring concert season, and there's been so many wonderful, wonderful concerts, just great, um, great music uh, from all of our, our students from elementary through high school. But also Friday, we were notified of the Jerry Award winner. So that's again, is the Tommy Awards that used to um, uh, <coughs> used to be called Tommy Awards, and they take care they take place at the Overture Center. For the first time, we've had we um, received the award for outstanding musical. So this is a really incredible award because um, there are only a few um, schools in the whole state of Wisconsin that get this award. And that means that our entire cast gets to perform on the stage at the Overture um, in June. And kind of to complement all of that, there were additional awards for stage management to Karina Krall and Cecilia Jewell and multiple awards for Linda Heimstreet, Sammy Heimstreet, Eli Weedle, Kathy Daly, and Jim Ordle. They all got many, many awards, um, which combined to this outstanding. But um, something that we're really excited about is Blaze, our student representative, and Cooper Buckholtz both uh, received outstanding lead awards. And so they'll be performing individually at the Overture as well. And um, Ellen Werner received outstanding supporting performance. And then the Spirit Award uh, went to Bella Buscemi, and so she'll be uh, performing in an ensemble. And it is an incredible, incredible show. It probably is about four hours long now because there's so many kids from around the state. But we are definitely center stage, so it's uh, really excited about that. And then in addition, um, Lake Mills was also named um, in the 2018 Best Communities for Music and ed ed um, Education. So another wonderful <coughs> award for, um, for our music department and, and all the people that su support those programs. So there's going to be this great event at the Overture Center, but if you can't make it, um, this Saturday night is um, the show choir showcase here at the high school at 7 o'clock, and it's just a great taste because all of those students that we're talking about will be performing that night. So um, I really encourage anyone to come. Students under 18 are free, um, show choir alumni are free, and adults are $10. So it's really great. Um, in the next couple weeks, we're going to be surveying families just really briefly about how they actually find out about weather closures because right now we're calling many, many TV stations, many, many radio stations, and we need to find out what's the most efficient way, and if we can pare that list down, we want to do that. Um, and we already set the date for the June meeting, so I'm done. Thank you. Yep. Any questions at all? That's a lot. Yeah. All right. The art show, the art show right. reception <laughs> is next Thursday. This Thursday. Oh, this Thursday <coughs> at 5 o'clock okay. at the library. Are you done? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Action items. Let's. Uh, these are all minutes of uh, past meetings that we've had, and we've had quite a few over the last uh, month or so. So let's take these all together, if we can, from A through G. Have somebody make a motion. Sir. I'll have to abstain from because I was not a part of several of these. Okay. Okay. Okay, I move the board approve the minutes of the April 9th, 2018 regular Board of Education meeting, the April 9th, 2018 Finance Committee proceedings, the, 2000, the uh, April 2nd, 2018 Special Board of Education meeting minutes. Wait, is that the one? I, oh, I was at that one, right? Yeah. Uh, the April 23rd, 2018 Special Board of Education meeting minutes. The uh, April 23rd, 2018 Finance Committee proceedings and the May 2nd, uh, 2018 Facilities Committee meeting proceedings and the May 2nd Special Board of Education meeting minutes. Did I get them all? Yes. Got them. Thank Second. you very much. Second? 
second with Don. All right. Um, let's do a roll call, and if you have to abstain from that, um, indicate so. So let's do a roll call vote on those. Rachel Davies. Aye. Rachel Davies. Pink. Uh, the May second. Yeah, you may to abstain. Yeah, so I abstain. Robert Tinkero. Abstain. Abstain. Oh, yeah, we're not going to be able to do it. <coughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so we don't have a. Vote. <laughs> yeah. All right. Continue. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for trying to save time. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to move this along a little bit. Right. All right, we're going to have to take them um, individually. 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 The first two can go together. Yeah. First two we can take together. Yeah. So, so finance and regular board of education meetings we can take together, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Don, you want a second? Second. Second on that. Okay, let's do a roll call on the first two, A and B. Anybody call a motion? Rachel Davies? Aye. Robert Timbrero? Abstain. David Rado? Abstain. Richard Mason? Aye. Don Delaney? Sorry. Aye. Okay, that passes three. Three in favor and um, two <coughs> abstentions. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do C. No, we do C. And D. Can we oh. do those together? No. No? no. Just C together <coughs> or yeah. C. alone? Just, just C. Yeah. I move approval of the April 2nd, 2018 Special Board of Education meeting minutes. Second. Okay, let's do a roll call on that. <coughs> Aye. Robert Dimpiro. Aye. David Rado. Abstain. John Delaney. Aye. Richard Mason. Aye. That passes four in favor, one abstention. Um, the April 23rd. You can probably do it. You can probably do the next four too. <coughs> Let me see. Special April 23rd. The special. Uh, Special Board of Education meeting and the Finance Committee meeting. I move approval of the April 23rd, 2018 Special Board of Education meeting minutes and the April 23rd, 2018 Finance Committee proceedings. Okay, give that Second. a Second. Second. No, you got it. <laughs> That's you. Megan, give that a... <clears throat> David Rado. Aye. John Delaney. Aye. Rachel Davies. Aye. Robert Dinkerio. Hi. Richard Mason. Hi. That passes unanimously. Great. Okay. Facilities Committee meeting. May 2nd. Uh, we better take that along, too. Oh, okay. Move approval of the May 2 Facilities Committee meeting proceedings. Second. Who is the second to approve this? Facilities Committee meeting. Okay. Don Delaney. Aye. Rachel Davies. Abstain. Robert Tipiro. Aye. David Rado. Abstain. Richard Mason. Wait. Aye. Wait. Aye. No, when it's proceedings, you can all vote, okay. even though oh. you didn't You're attend. Yeah, even though you didn't attend the meeting, it's just okay. a, right, because the proceedings are a part of the record. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> okay. So. So it still passed three. Okay. With two abstentions at this point. Okay. Lastly. All right. Special Board of Education meeting, May second. I move the board approve the minutes of the May 2nd, 2018 Special Board of Education meeting. Second. Wouldn't it second it to approve the uh, Special Board of Education meeting? Megan? Rachel Davies? Abstain. Robert Dimpiro? Aye. David Rado? Aye. John Delaney? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. And that passes four in favor and one abstention. Great. We got through these finally. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, approval of vouchers and invoices. I move the board approve the vouchers and invoices in the amount of one million three hundred ninety-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-seven and two cents for the month of April two thousand eighteen. Second. Okay, moving and second to approve the vouchers and invoices for April. Roll call, please. Robert Imperial. Aye. David Rado. Aye. Don Delaney. Aye. Rachel Davies. Aye. Richard Mason. Aye, and that passes unanimously. The treasurer's report. I move the board approve the <coughs> treasurer's report for the month of April 2018. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the treasurer's report. Roll call, please. David Rado. Aye. Don Delaney. Aye. Rachel Davies. Aye. Robert Dimpiero. Aye. Richard Mason. 
aye. That passed unanimously. Approval Wisconsin Standards for Science, Music, Information, Technology, Literacy, and Computer Science. Okay. Move the board approve the Wisconsin Standards for Science, Music, Information, and Technology, Literacy, and Computer Science. Second. Who did second and to approve <coughs> that whole thing? And, and uh, any questions or comments on those? Pam, do you have a comment on that? I would all? just say that we had the first reading of, of these in March, and um, there is now actually an expectation that we approve all the standards that we use in every curriculum area every July. So even though you're approving these now, we're going to bring the list back um, for all areas to you in July. Right. Um, did we vote on that? No. <coughs> no. Rhonda yeah. Aye. Rachel Davis? Aye. Robert Aye. David Aye. Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passed unanimously. Uh, approval of rental agreement for agriculture. <coughs> I'm going to let Wendy talk about this. This is a, an exciting donation oh, okay. situation. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I was very pleased when Luke Wienfeld, our agriculture teacher, had reached out to me that um, uh, Roger and Beth Wienfeld wanted to uh, rent land to our FFA program um, at for about five acres at no cost actually um, so I met with Roger and Beth Roger Wienfeld and you know we re reviewed the agreement and we're recommending to go forward with it <clears throat> motion please I move the board approve the land use agreement between Roger and Beth Wienfeld and the Lake Mills area school district second Moved and seconded to approve the, the Wiedenfeld offer. Yeah. Um, questions or comments on that? I just should, I should have added that um, years ago we used to um, plant um, crops um, behind the high school. Yep. And I think this is great that we're able to do this again. I mean, unfortunately, it's not right on site, but it's going to be a great experience for our students. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Okay, roll call, please. Rachel Davies? Aye. Robert Dimpiro? Aye. David Rado? Aye. Don Delaney? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye, and that passes unanimously. Uh, approval of support staff, staff resignation. Samantha Flynn. Okay, sorry, I got booted out here again. So we have re one resignation, <coughs> uh, very sudden this month, uh, for a paraeducator at the elementary school. I move the board approve the resignation of Ms. Samantha Flint and thank her for her service to the students and families of the Lake Mills Area School District. Second. Move and second to approve the resignation. Any questions on that? Comments? Roll call, please. Robert Tinsdale? Aye. David Riddle? Aye. Don Delaney? Aye. Rachel Davies? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Approval of school nurse agreement for the 18 19 school year. This is the agreement that we sign each year. I wanted to bring it to your attention this year because um, as we were reviewing it, Wendy noticed that there needed to be um, um, a hold harmless information and some information about their insurance carrier. So we have updated that contract for any, from anything that we had pa uh, approved in the past. And I also wanted to tell you that reflects an increase of 2.5%. That's a contracting for our school nurse services through Fort Hospital. Motion, please. I move the board approve the school nurse agreement between Fort Healthcare and the Lake Mills Area School District for the 2018 2019 school year. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions or comments? How many hours does that translate into? 30 hours a week. About 30, 30 hours a week. <coughs> Any other questions? Roll call, please. David Rado? Aye. Aye. Rachel Davies? Aye. Robert Dimperio? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Approval of new professional staff contracts for the 1819 school year. Well, we've all been engaged in the hiring process. And first of all, I wanted to tell you about the new Spanish teacher. Uh, remember that we had hoped to find someone who had experience working with our English language learners and could supplement our program so we could continue to enhance that. And we were able to find someone. Um, Alberto Fontran Moreno. Um, he's actually from Spain. He's a native speaker. And he has worked in all levels here in the United States, um, 6 to 12. And he's really excited to come to a small school. Um, and he's very passionate about 
really immersing students in the Spanish language and the Spanish culture, as well as assisting those students who are native speakers themselves. So we, we've fulfilled our objective um, in finding that position. Um, just this weekend, we were able to uh, interview and offer, and it was accepted, um, a middle school um, special education teacher. And he also has experience and will be joining the middle school staff, uh, we're thinking, at the seventh grade level. And then finally, we're able to find a special education teacher with a little bit of experience as well. She already lives in Lake Mills. And she's really anxious to begin her career here. She'll be special education at the elementary level. A motion, please. I move the board approve the following professional staff contracts for the 2018-19 school year. Mr. Alberto Fontaine Moreno as middle and high school Spanish teacher and English language <laughs> learner support. Mr. Bradley Ludke as middle school special education teacher and Ms. Jessica Pierce as elementary school special education teacher. Second. Moving and second to approve the um, three uh, new teachers. Any questions, comments? I noticed one of the applicants had an incomplete application. Hmm. At least what's, what's available in the PDF that we have here. Well, we can, can make sure can we get it, it says none specified, none specified for position seeking DPI file number there's no there's no data okay so we'll make sure we we'll make sure we'll get the rest of that because okay. they're all they are all experienced teachers so they yeah are I just all, noticed that there was okay blanks on okay there. we'll see where that any other questions roll call please Don Delaney aye Rachel Davies aye Robert Dickinger aye David Rado aye Richard Mason Hi, right, that passes unanimously. Approval of professional staff contracts for the 1819 school year. So this is the complete list of the professional staff as it's been rolled over. Um, you'll, you will not see the recently hired people on that list. This is existing teachers who are rolling over for next year. The only change in that list is that um, Tara Williams in the role of um, ELL, English Language Learner Coordinator, has been increased from 0.745 to full time. So we can continue to enhance that program. Motion, please. I move the board approve the presented professional staff contracts for the 2018-2019 school year. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the contracts for next year. Any questions on those? Roll call, please. Rachel Davies. Aye. Robert Dimperio. Aye. David Rado. Abstain. Don Delaney. Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passes four in favor, one abstention. Approval of non-professional staff letters of assignment. Again, this is a rollover of our um, staff that's already here, and you will not see the newly hired people on that list. I move the board approve the non-professional staff letters of assignment as presented for the 2018-19 school year. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the non-professional staff. Any questions on those? Um, hold on a second. Don cannot second yes. it. We cannot. We need another the second. On that. Second. Okay. <clears throat> seconded by Mr. Imperio. Questions? Comments? Roll call, please. Robert Imperio. Aye. David Rado. Aye. Don Delaney. Abstain. Rachel Davies? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passes four in favor and one abstention. Uh, approval of co-curricular letters of assignment for the 1819 school year. So these are all of our coaches, um, club advisors, and other uh, miscellaneous uh, additional positions that we have. I move the board approve the co-curricular letters of assignment as presented for the 2018-19 school year. Second. We second it to approve the co-curricular <coughs> letters of assignment. Questions on those? All right, roll call, please. David Rado. Abstain. Don Delaney. Aye. Rachel Davies. Aye. Robert Dimperio. Aye. Richard Mason. Aye. That passes uh, four in favor, one abstention. Approval of <coughs> non-professional staff letters of assignment. 
Student dues and fees. Student dues and fees. And Q? R. Yeah, we did all those already. You're down to R. Well, this, this thing is working You're really. Yeah, yeah. This thing it does. Yeah, really go well. to paper. Okay, approval of student dues and fees for the 18-19 school year. Wendy, do you want to talk about that? Um, this is something that you do every year. The only change that we're proposing for next year is our lunch prices increasing by a nickel. I move the board approve the student dues and fees for the 2018-19 school year. Second. Moved and second and approve the student dues and fees. <laughs> Questions on those? From anyone? Hey, roll call, please. Aye. Aye. Robert Aye. <coughs> David Rado? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passes unanimously. Um, approval of WIAA membership for the 18-19 school year. Although there are no longer any fees to belong to the WIAA, they ask that you approve this um, agreement each year. I move the board approve the WIAA membership for the 2018-19 for the school year. Second. Move in the second and approve the um, membership in WIAA. Questions on that? Comments? Roll call, please. Rachel Davies? Aye. Robert DiGiorgio? Aye. David Rado? Aye. John Delaney? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passes unanimously. Approval of France trip. So we're June already. June of 19. Right. We're already <laughs> looking out to June of 19. We ask that these um, large trips are approved a year in advance. Um, I also wanted to remind you that we've gone into a three-year uh, rotation. So one year is a French trip, one year is a Spanish trip, one year is a history trip. So this is the France trip. In the past, we have had a partnership with Sauk Prairie High School and then had a sister school that the people, um, kids and adults went to in the south of France. Um, for many reasons, we're no longer going to do that. And um, Ms. Anzard is proposing a trip to France that is with a more traditional travel company, but it still has some portions that's a homestay. But um, we're not going to the sister school in France anymore. Motion, please. I move the board approve the French France trip in June 2019. It is understood the board will incur no cost and accept no liability for any funds lost for any reason. Second. Moved and uh, seconded to approve the France trip or French trip. Well, it's whatever. to France, so I'm not sure how she. Uh, <laughs> any any questions, comments? All right, roll call, please. Robert Tinhiro. Aye. David Rado? Aye. John Delaney? Aye. Rachel Davies? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. That passes unanimously. Approval of gifts. There are several gifts uh, for you to approve. Um, I would just say that um, the value of the agriculture land that we'll be renting at no cost um, is approximate. We didn't have an exact, exact value on that. I move the board accept the following gifts to the Lake Mills Area School District and thank all of the donors for their generous support of our students. Two $100 anonymous donations for families in need. Roger and Beth Wiedenfeld's monetary donation of $250 and the donation of five acres of agriculture land valued at approximately $500 to the Lake Mills, Area, Lake Mills High School FFA. ExxonMobil Educational Alliance donation of $500 to the Lake Mills High School and Waterhouse Foods donation of $600 to the Lake Mills High School English Department. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the gifts. Uh, and again, we, we thank <coughs> all the givers. It's been, you know, all year. There's one every, every time we have a board meeting, there's a number of gifts. So any questions or comments? All right, roll call, please. David Rado? Aye. John Delaney? Aye. Rachel Davies? Aye. Robert Tempurio? Aye. Richard Mason? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Uh, board agenda items. Um, we know for sure that we will be talking about the lease with Rock Lake Activity Center. As um, you heard, the transition program is there, so we'll, we need to renew that lease. Um, we'll also have the second reading and approval of the um, high school student handbook. Um, we hope that we will have, um, for your approval, um, the salaries um, for each of the employee, employee groups ready for next month. Anything else? Anything go? All right. A motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Move to second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No? Good. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>